Good day, everyone. It is an honor to present to you our oral presentation entitled Land Snail Species from the Rice Paddies in Tagum City, Philippines. I am Jeanette G. Mulano, faculty from Kapalong College of Agriculture, Sciences, and Technology. Together with me are my co-researchers, Karin Christine Vitor and Catherine Kagaanan, both from the University of Mindanao Tagum College. So here is the flow of my presentation. First, we have the introduction, followed by methods, research highlights, and lastly, the conclusion. Land snails are an important part of the food chain, according to Siddiqui et al. And as mentioned by Omodo and Iyo 2005, although some land snails were found to be crop pests and causes considerable damage in agriculture and horticulture, they formed a major part of the world fauna. According to Cameron and Pocrisco 2015, the inventories of species based on samples or collections in sites are important to conservation planning. As suggested by Picardal and Dolorosa 2014, species inventories and habitat assessment are important and keys to biodiversity restoration. As reported by Hilario 1978 in Nature Exploitation and Protection in Mindanao, the Philippines may be one of the most biologically diverse countries worldwide. However, it is under constant threat due to increased activities such as land conversion, industrial development, population pressure, mining, logging, and several plantations. With the outstanding scientific findings in this study, there were no known studies on the biodiversity of land snails in Tagum City, Davao del Norte. Hence, this research is presented. Specifically, this research aimed to determine species richness, species abundance, and biodiversity in the rice fields of Pagsabang and Tagum City, Davao del Norte. Results of this study will fill in the gap of knowledge on land snails and serve as baseline information for future biodiversity planning. In this method, entry protocol was observed on the conduct of sampling using the strip transit sampling method. Field work was carried out from September 16 to 18, 2017, between 5 to 9 in the morning and 4 to 6 in the evening. At each study site, 10 by 10 meter quadrats were established with 20 meter intervals at each sampling station as adopted from Fontanilla et al. 2014. The establishment of the stations was from end-to-end -end part and to the middle part of the one-hectare rice field. Stations 1, 2, and 3 were near the confluence of the river with some planted bananas and coconut trees. The remaining stations, station 4 and 5, were near from the drainage canal of the rice field that is perpendicular to the three stations. Each sampling station was sampled for 1 to 2 hours by collecting both live specimens and empty shells using the opportunistic method through hand-picking and time-searched method. Snails were hand-picked and the soil litter was hand-scoped in approximately 1 inch deep using gloved hands and were placed in labeled container for temporary keeping. These methods were adopted from the studies of Omodo and EU 2005, Nunes and Santos 2012, and Cuadrado 2015. Following thorough cleaning, the specimens were transported to Biology Laboratory of UM Tagum College, Tagum City for observation and identification. Collected specimens were washed thoroughly and were preserved in 70% alcohol for subsequent examination, identification, and classification. Vernier caliper was used to measure the height and weight of the shell. The snail specimens were also photo-documented. Initial identification was done using the key guides of Galan et al. 2015, Hoffman and Pyre 2014, Sobrepeña and De Mayo 2014, based on shell morphology. The identification was done up to family level and to species level if possible. The initial identification was verified by, by an expert from the Bureau of Agriculture in Tagum City. Presenting to you the highlights of our research. There were a total of 1,439 individuals collected. Four gastropod species were collected and identified from five different sampling sites, namely Vivipara costata, Melanoides toricula, Acatina fulica, and Pomacea caniculata. These represent four families, 
Akatini Day, 6.5%. Tiari Day with 2.0%. Vivipari Day with 1.6%. And Ampulari Day with 89.9%. And four genera, namely Akatina, Milanoides, Vivipara, and Pumaseya. This study employed the, st the statistical software BioDivePro to compute for each quadrat of the following biodiversity indices of the rice field in Pagsabangan, Tagum City, Davao del Norte using Shannon's Index, Simpson's Index, and Simpson's Evenness Index. Figure 5a presents the species richness of the sampled stations. Among the four species collected, Pumaseya caniliculata appears to be most widely distributed among the sampling sites with 1,383 individuals confirming the invasive nature of the species according to Kagawan 2002, followed by Melanoides turricula that appeared in stations 2, 4, and 5 with 30 individuals. These species can be found in different types of canals according to Mayadasta and Duta 2012, like the drainage canals in the rice field. Viviparicostata costata appears only in stations 3, 4, and 5, with 25 individuals. This native snail is considered endangered because their populations are now less stable because of carp numbers and river flow management, according to Malcolm 2015. Lastly, the species Akatina fulica or the giant African gland snail was only appeared in stations 1 and 2. This species prefers areas of low to mid elevation, according to Egon 1, 2007. This attribute might be the reason why this species can only be found in the higher areas in the rice field sample. Figure 5b shows the diversity index of the four sampling areas. We have the Simpson index that measures the probability of individual species selected in every station belong to the same species resulted into the following scores. Station 1 and 2 has a diversity of 1 that represents no biodiversity. Station 5 has the lowest value of 0 0.693. In the Simpsons index, the bigger the value of D, the lower the diversity, according to Siddique et al. 2010. Hence, among the five stations, Station 5 has the highest diversity as compared to the other sampling stations. On the other hand, Shannon's index accounts for both abundance and evenness of the species present in a particular sampling site. Station 5, in this case, has the greatest value among the five sampling areas, with an index score of 0 0.5394, followed by Station 4, with an index score of 0 0.2943, then Station 2, with an index score of 0 0.2868, Station 3, with 0 0.0551 index score, and lastly, Station 1, with diversity index score of 0. The range for measuring this index is from 0 to 1 in which 0 has no diversity and 1 has the highest diversity. It's according to Siddique et al. 2010. In this case, it can be drawn that Station 5 has the highest diversity and Station 1 has the lowest one. Lastly, the Simpsons Evenness Index that accounts in how well distributed the species present in a particular sampling area has the range between 0 so in this case, 0 0.25 to 1, that signifies high evenness among the five sampling stations. Station 5 has the highest value, but it does not mean that this area is high in terms of evenness because the value is too small to become 1, followed by station 2, then 4, 3, and last is the station 1 that is dominated by only a single species. So based on the gathered data and analysis of the results, the following conclusions were drawn from this research. There are four identified and verified species, namely Akatina fulica, Milanoides turricula, Vivipara costata, and Pomaceia canelicolata that belongs to four different genera. And station 1 has the lowest diversity among five something station, and station 5 has the highest diversity. In addition, the richest based on species richness among five sampling stations are stations four and five with four identified species. So these are the references of this study and I would like also to grab this opportunity 
to acknowledge the institution and organization behind the success of this study. We have the Kapalong College of Agriculture, Sciences and Technology, and the University of Mindanao Tagum College. Also extending our deepest gratitude to the Bureau of Agriculture in Tagum City as well as the Barangay Pagsabangan for letting us to conduct this study. And that concludes my oral presentation. Thank you for listening and God bless us all.